All right, we are back with a new video. And today we'll be updating the power rankings for Australian Survivor, Blood vs. Water. Following week four or episode 12, we are now around the halfway point of the season. Like we are now essentially at the merge. We got confirmation that this Sunday's episode will be the merge episode, consistent with what it was last season with Brand vs. Braun. And again, there's quite a bit to talk about with this power ranking. But let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in. So similar to these previous power rankings, I'm going to be ranking these people based on how likely I think it is that they'll win the game from this point. And a lot of that's going to be based on Edgic, although I do also work in the gameplay to a certain extent. So starting off this list at number 16, we have the first boo from this previous week. We have Nina. And what a way for her to go out. So... In episode 10, obviously, she talks about how she was a swing vote at the last tribal and is glad to have stuck with Josh. She says she's in the majority with the alpha males who think they're running the game right now. She seems to agree with Josh's plan to target Shayel. Even so, she asserts that while she'll play along with the alpha males, she doesn't want Shayel to go home. She wants to work with her moving forward. She tells Shayel that they could use the big guys as meat shields. She then gets an individual intro package about how she works a boring job and that she wants to prove herself. She feels like she's currently in a strong position in the game. She sits down with the guys to target Mel next. Nina thinks Mel is smart and knows the game, making her a threat. And then obviously she gets injured during the reward challenge. Doesn't seem too debilitating at first, but then obviously they re-examine her after the fact and they decide to pull her from the game. And overall, I feel like Nina played a pretty strong game and was definitely one of the bigger characters in the pre-merge. Admittedly, she falls into a similar trap as Sandra in that the edit occasionally gave her too much credit for things, particularly with the Andy vote at the beginning. However, it also showed her as being pretty observant about particular people in the game. She was one of the first people to recognize Khan as being a big threat. We saw her work to try to save certain allies, particularly Shayel and Mel. And even after the swap, while she was ultimately forced to vote out her mom, she did a solid job of reintegrating and allying with the alpha males running the tribe. Now granted, the promo heading into the episode said that three big players would be going home this week, and her injury was highlighted in that promo. However, given that promos can be misleading, I didn't think that the injury would amount to much. But once the episode happened and we started hearing from Nina about how good of a position she's in, once we saw that intro package, those were probably red flags that she was probably going home here. And again, I'll admit that a medevac is a bit underwhelming given how big of a character she was. But I mean, with how good she was playing the game, you know, it's sort of hard to see how she blew, blows it up to where she would have been voted out. So like I said, I really enjoyed Nina on here. It really stinks that she was medevac, and I really hope she gets a second chance moving forward. But for this list, I have to put her here at number 16. Now we're moving on to number 15, and we have the next big player that went home from this previous week. We have Croc. And again, another pretty epic downfall for Croc. I mean, in episode 10, Jesse says he's in his alliance. Later on, he's shown being loyal to Ben, but Chrissy and Con are confident they can flip him. Later, he gets confessional about the split vote plan, but he doesn't want to see Jesse go. He then pitches a straight up con blindside, but in the end, obviously they blindside Ben, but you know, it's a non-elimination round, so it doesn't matter too, too much. In episode 11, he tells Sam how hard the vote was last time, but appears willing to blindside Ben this time. He has a confessional where he's split between sticking with Chrissy and blindsiding Ben and protecting Ben, who he sees as an ally. He also mentions his idol, which is a red flag. Sure, and sure enough, he sits down with Chrissy, Khan, and Michelle and proposes the Jesse blindside. He says in confessional that Jesse and Jordy would be big threats at the merge. He tells them that sticking with Jesse would put them at the bottom of the majority, which is kind of true, but, you know, we'll get to that in a moment. He then tells them that sticking with Jesse, I mean, that Ben about the Jesse blindside, and he seems to agree with it at first, Ben. Even so, Ben decides to leak the plan to Jesse and Sam and puts together a plan to blindside him. We also see Chrissy being conflicted over whether to stick with his plan or remain loyal to Jesse. He realizes this is a difficult decision for Chrissy as she likes Jesse, but asserts that he has detached emotion and made the right decision. And ultimately, Croc is blindsided with an idol in his pocket. 
overall, I feel like Croc played a mostly solid pre-merge game, although it's not without his issues. I mean, he was part of the initial majority with the Alpha Males plus Sophie. And while he's blindsided at the second tribal he attends, he's able to reintegrate through his relationship with Sandra, gets back in the majority for the J vote. At the swap, he's in a pretty solid position as well, where he had allies in Jesse, Sam, and of course Chrissy. And I have to give him at least some credit for not being targeted those in those initial rounds, despite him and Chrissy being on the same tribe. I think the main thing that does him in is not getting an accurate read of Ben. I don't think it was inherently a bad idea that he wanted to keep Ben around, especially with the threat of Jesse and Sam both getting to the merge with their partners. But what he failed to realize was that Ben blamed Chrissy for his blind side. And through that, Ben's relationship with him wasn't as strong as he thought, despite it being Jesse and Sam leading the charge. And while our vote didn't end up mattering, the fact that he couldn't get Chrissy on board with his plan is also a knock. So at the end of the day, there are definitely knocks to his game, especially in that last round. Sort of like Amy to where he kind of accidentally blows up his game. Mind you, I don't think he's as much as fault as I feel like there's plenty to blame with Ben as we'll be talking about in a minute with the way in which he was blindsided. But in any case, there are elements of Croc's game that I find somewhat impressive and sort of a shame to see him go here. But again, he did. So he's here at number 15. Now we're moving on to number 14. We have the other big player, literally a big player. We have Ben. And this was a pretty fun week for him, sort of a fun little downfall for Ben. In episode 10, Jesse reveals he's been meaning to target him due to being a physical threat and partner with Shayel, who's also a big threat. He's also been getting crankier due to lack of food. After the immunity challenge, he gets a confessional about losing it. He talks with Jesse and Sam about the boat. He feels like Michelle is the weakest link in challenges while Khan has an idol. He agrees to a split vote plan between Michelle and Khan. He feels good about, at, about Tribal, saying he isn't calling the shots, but also isn't being targeted. And of course, Chrissy lets it out shortly after that he's a potential target, only for Jesse to reassure him. He says in confessional that he, Jesse, Sin, Sam are a tight trio and feels good that they have two allies that are loyal to him. But unfortunately, he is blindsided, but is saved by a non-elimination round, obviously with the kidnap trip twist, but he gets to stay on the tribe. In episode 11, Chrissy and Jesse... Uh, talk about how things have been awkward on camp with Ben still in the game. Jesse claims Ben would target Chrissy and Croc at the merge and that he wants to throw the next immunity challenge to complete the blindside. He then has a confessional about being blindsided and uh, how he wants to get revenge on Chrissy, who he blames for the blindside. His goal is to get to the merge with Shael and dominate the game. After losing the challenge again, it seems like the plan is to vote him out. Croc decides he wants to save him, however by putting together a Jesse blindside. And while Ben seems to agree with it at first, he decides to leak the plan to Jesse and Sam, presumably because he thinks Chrissy was the one that orchestrated his blindside, which is just a bad read. In confessional, he says that he's playing it safe, as he was blindsided before and fears that he'll be blindsided again. He then agrees to a croc blindside and says he'll tell Chrissy that it's still Jesse. He goes off and tells Michelle about the plan, while she doesn't seem happy about it, Ben feels like their bond from their original tribe will carry over. And obviously it does, as the croc blindside goes through, gets him out with an idol in his pocket. Uh, not great for Ben, but whatever. Episode 12, he has a confessional recapping the previous tribal while asserting the croc blindside was good. Even so, Chrissy isn't handling it super well, but he's here to play a game. He feels good with Sam, Jesse, and Michelle in that he demonstrated his loyalty to him has a confessional about Chrissy targeting him and how he needs to neutralize that problem. He knows Khan and Chrissy are voting for him, but he has a plan to flush Khan's idol and eliminate Chrissy. He tells Sam about his split vote plan. He also tells Jesse about it. And of course, at Tribal, he's voted out once again. However, due to a twist, he actually has a chance to save himself through a fire-making challenge against Mel, the person voted out from the other tribe. However, he loses the fire-making challenge to Mel and is eliminated. So overall, Ben played a roughly similar game to Croc, although there are a bit more holes. I do think he was closer to Sophie early in the game than Croc, but obviously they're so blindsided at that first Sophie vote. Through his relationship with Sandra, is able to reintegrate at the swap. He's in an okay position, although we saw, even as early as episode 9, him being a potential target from Khan moving forward. And obviously that's expanded upon well into this week. 
but then he's blindsided by Jesse and his group only to be saved by a non-elimination round. And like Sophie, his run after being saved doesn't go well either. He remains a pretty prime target even after the blindside. The only reason he wasn't sent out immediately after is him thinking Chrissy was the main orchestrator of his blindside for some reason, which caused him to not trust Croc's plan to save him and trusting Jesse, the actual orchestrator of his blindside, to the point where he leaks Croc's plan to save him, throwing Croc under the bus. Now, it goes without saying that this is a pretty bad move, as Croc was much more loyal to him than Jesse was. Like, I get that Chrissy was someone that wanted him out, but Croc was literally fighting to save him. And this is reinforced the very next round when Jesse and Sam flick back on him, uh, sending him out as a result. You know, you know, I never thought he was a contender based on his edit. You know, he was pretty quiet in the first two weeks. There's actually a point where, I this was back when I thought Shael was the top contender, where I thought that Ben would actually be an even earlier boot than what he ended up being. And I thought that was a way to boon Shael's edit moving forward. And while I was right in that Shael would outlast Ben, it seems that, like, at this point, Shael is an underdog figure that probably isn't going to win anyway. And, of course, I mean, Ben wasn't winning either. But, again, this was still a fun sort of arc for him this week, sort of him trying to be this power player and ultimately getting blindsided twice and along the way getting rid of his own ally, someone that really trusted him. You know, it's still a fun downfall for him nonetheless. And because of that, I have him here at number 14. And with that, we are now moving to the 13 players still in the game, the 13 players that have made the merge. And we'll be ranking these players based on how likely I think it is that they'll win the game. Once again, uh, this is largely based on Edgic. I mean, I will talk a bit about gameplay as we go along, but Edgic will be my main consideration here. But starting at 13, the player I think is the least likely to win Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water for me is Mel. And again, she's kind of been a bottom contender for me for a lot of the season, and for good reason. I mean, in episode 10, we see Nina targeting her, aside from that no content. Episode 11, KJ, she's close with her. Even so, KJ recognizes that Mel and Shayel are at the bottom. Not great right there, and really, we don't really hear much from Mel herself. And in episode 12, she's voted out of the tribe. However, she simply goes to fire with Ben, and obviously she wins. And overall, Mel, again, is still pretty invisible, despite being in a pretty bad position gameplay-wise. I mean, she could obviously be this underdog figure based on how she is in the game right now, with her being targeted and her just not being super well connected in the game. But even so, I mean, she barely gets any content. I mean, both her and Michelle, even, have been targeted at various points. And it's sort of crazy how they're getting to the merge together, despite being in such bad positions for each of them. I also read something this week that I believe was during this week's batch of episodes that one of them was, uh, maybe it was both of them, like Mel and Michelle like, had their birthday recently, and apparently their dad also passed away in the last year. Someone pointed that out. And the fact that none of that made the final edit is pretty uh, telling in terms of their chances, in terms of what the show really thinks of them, in terms of telling their story. So that's a big reason that I have Mel towards the bottom here. She's here at number 13. Now we're moving on to number 12, and we have Mel's sister. We have Michelle. And like Mel, I mean, I don't really feel too confident in her either. This is, again, another largely invisible week for her. In episode 10, she's talked about as a target, aside from that, no content. In episode 11, Croc pitches the Jesse blindside to her. Obviously, later on, we see Ben approach her with the Croc plan. While she doesn't seem too happy with it, Ben feels confident that their bond from their original tribe would carry over. And sure enough, Michelle sits down with the Chrissy and asserts the plan is Jesse. Again, even so, Chrissy is conflicted about the whole situation as she likes Jesse. And obviously she goes along with it, but again, we don't really hear Michelle talk much about their relationship at all. And in episode 12, Ben says he trusts her. Later, Sam says she's on board with Ben's plan to get rid of Chrissy. But obviously, Michelle is blindsided again, where Ben is voted out, loses, sort of put in a lose-lose situation where obviously Ben and Mel are both voted out and set the fire. So, so she was guaranteed to lose one of them. Really, she gets kind of lucky that isn't a straight-up double tribal, where she could have lost both her closest allies in the game at that point, so start crazy there. And overall, again, Michelle's been pretty quiet throughout a lot of the season. Same issues I have with Mel apply to Michelle. 
The reason I have her slightly above Mel is that, again, she isn't in as much immediate danger as Mel. I mean, she wasn't voted out, of course. But at the end of the day, like, she's still pretty invisible in the edit. We don't really know much about her. I have a feeling she and Mel could still be targeted early in the merge, despite not really being that big of a threat. But, again, I she, she at least wasn't voted out. So that's a big reason I have her here, number 12. Now moving on to number 11, and again, we have another largely invisible person here at this point, and here we have David, and again, he's just kind of fallen off the face of the earth. I mean, I mean, always had, he was pretty prominent the first week, but aside from that, has, again, been pretty invisible. In episode 10, Josh tells him he's targeting Shael next. He agrees, feeling like voting out Shael would cause Ben to crumble. No content, aside from that, no content in episode 11, and no content in episode 12 either. So overall, again, pretty invisible week, pretty bad uh, from Edgic's standpoint. And to be fair, like, he isn't playing that bad of a game. Like, he he's kind of recovered to where he's kind of in the Alpha Male Alliance. But even then, he feels like a pretty minor character. And I wouldn't be surprised if he were sniped out of the game at some point because of that. But on the other hand, he is coming into the merge as a non-threat. You know, he's a single. You know, there's definitely potential for him there. If the guys do end up having some control during that early section, particularly with Jordy, I feel like he'd definitely be a part of that contingent. So there's definitely options for him gameplay-wise. It's just that he's been so invisible in the edit that I feel like I can't really put him too high here. And he's here at number 11. Now we're moving on to number 10. And we have another person that, again, was already quiet this week. And here we have Jordan. Again, what is there to really say about him? I mean, in episode 10... Mark talks to him and Jordy during the reward about there being advantages. And aside from that, no content. No content in episode 11 and no content in episode 12 either. So overall, this was largely invisible week for Jordan as well. He will be coming to the merge with Josh, which is something at least. I mean, he is in his alliance. So I think gameplay-wise, he definitely has some options there. Even so, I wouldn't be surprised if he's targeted soon due to having his partner in the game and being linked to this alpha male alliance. I mean... I mean, he could be the merge boot, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, it wouldn't be too, too surprising for me. I mean, then again, it could also be some other options we could be talking about later. So there's that. But I'm just not feeling too great about Jordan. I mean, while he has gotten some decent content here or there, it, it, it's largely dried up recently. And again, I'm not feeling too great about his prospects within the game. And he's here at number 10. Now we're moving on to number nine, and we have someone pretty similar to Jordan, and we actually have his partner, we have Josh, and what the heck is happening with Josh here? I mean, in episode 10, he tells uh, Jordy and David that he wants to target Shale next, aside from that, no content. In episode 11, KJ is happy to be on the Blood Tribe because of her relationship with him, but aside from that, no content. In episode 12, he tells Shale the plan to vote up Mel, and... No content aside from that. So overall, this was a return to form for Josh, making me wonder what the point of that visibility spike even was. I mean, I talked about last week about how the reason it could be there is because it could be there to set up uh, Nina's edit, you know, like someone for him, her to take down by aligning with her, him. But again, Nina exited the game, and that really sucked any role he could have had out of the story and obviously him losing Nina isn't great as, again, even if I feel like she was going to turn on him at some point, you know, like she was still aligned with him at some point, so that wasn't great. Even without Nina in the game, though, I feel like KJ has taken the mantle of the underdog infiltrating the guys' club, building inroads so that she can eventually turn on them. And while most of that content centered around KJ's relationship with Jordy, Josh could very well be targeted as well, especially with his partner Jordan still in the game. So like Jordan, I'm not feeling too great about Josh either. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out in the next couple of rounds either, especially that Alpha Guys Alliance sort of falls out of the numbers. So because of that, I have him here at number nine. Now we're moving on to number eight, and we have someone who could get some spike in content moving forward, but I'm not feeling too great about it. And here we have Shael. And again, this wasn't that great of a week for her either. In episode 10, Josh talks about her as a target. However, Nina wants to work with her. She says that Mark would be the first voted out if he doesn't win immunity at the merge. In episode 11, is upset that her tribe didn't kidnap Ben, but is trying not to show it. And obviously, 
with Nina having left the game, the men are getting stronger, so she needs to refocus. When asked of who he's working with, Jordy says, everyone except Shayel, not a great sign. She has another confessional about how hurt she is, that Nina is out of the game, but obviously also the fact that Ben wasn't brought over due to the kidnap twist. She sees how KJ is being welcomed, welcomed into the tribe. She feels like he really needs to fight, but again, doesn't really matter much in this episode. And in episode 12, she's a main target for her tribe, but ends up winning individual immunity. Josh tells her to plan to vote out Mel, but tells him that KJ will go after her later on. Has a confessional about her not being sure Mel is the right target. Sure enough, she tells Mark KJ is her biggest threat, but ultimately she loses Ben following the fire making challenge. So overall, Shale appears to be an underdog figure, having played under the radar for much of the pre-merge. Gameplay-wise, this wasn't that great of a week for her, losing both Nina and Ben. Despite losing Ben, I wouldn't be surprised if people continue seeing her as a threat moving forward. But even edit-wise, I feel like KJ is taking her place as the under-the-radar threat infiltrating the core power structure, so not feeling too great about Shale at this point. But again, she at least is sort of less of a threat now, even if not really. And I think there is enough content there to where she could still be this underdog figure moving forward. So because of that, I have a here at number eight. Now we're moving on to number seven, and we have a bit of an interesting person to talk about here. Here we have KJ. And again, this was a bit of an interesting week for her. So in episode 10, she's talked about as being at the bottom of the tribe. Later on, Jesse talks to her about the split vote plan and she agrees to it. Later on, Croc approaches her about a Khan blind side. She gets a confessional about how big of a threat Khan is and how ridiculous it is that Jesse is dictating this vote. At Tribal, she receives a vote, which goes unexplained, but it becomes important as it makes her eligible to be voted into the other tribe. And sure enough, that's what happens where she's kidnapped by the blood tribe. And then we lead into episode 11, where she talks about being happy to be on the Blood Tribe. She knows she has relationships with Jordy, Mark, Josh, and Mel. She asks Jordy who he's working with, and he says everyone except Shael. She observes that it's the men at the top with Mel and Shael at the bottom. She tells Jordy she wants to play with them. Her observation of the men running the tribe is reinforced by Shael's comments. Even so, she feels like she can work with the men rather than target them. And you know, aside from that, no content. In episode 12, she has a confessional about being the next on the chopping block after Shale wins immunity. Even so, she wants to deal with the men and get them to keep her around. She approaches them and declares her loyalty to them, which obviously works. She says Mel would flip to the other side if they got to the merge. And again, she gets her way. Mel is voted out by the tribe, but again, just saved by the non-elimination. Um, overall, this was a good week for KJ. I mean, episode 10 isn't that great, but when she gets kidnapped by the other tribe, she starts getting more content as an underdog. She does some great work in bonding with a lot of the guys who are controlling the tribe at the moment. She says she wants to work with them, and she, do, she does so effectively. I mean, despite being one of the two targets going to the latest tribal, she's spared through those relationships and will now be entering the merge. Again, she doesn't have her partner. She's a single, but again, I feel like that is there to lower her threat level. I feel like in some ways, KJ has picked up the mantle of this under-the-radar player that's working with the alpha males and gaining their trust. And considering she's a super fan, she probably recognizes she'll need to turn on them at some point. So I think there's definitely some upside for KJ moving forward. I think, again, compared to Shael, I feel like she has quite a bit more potential at this point as an underdog. But again, I feel like it's just not enough. I feel like there are other people who have more developed characters and people who I think have more potential to actually win the game based on her edits. So because of that, I have her here at number seven. Now we're moving on to number six, and we have a pretty interesting person to talk about, although one that I think is being set up for a downfall relatively soon. And here we have Jordy. And this is a pretty interesting week for Jordy. I mean, in episode 10, has a confessional about winning the reward. He spots Mark finding an idol clue and asks him about it, only for Mark to lie. He then gets a confessional about it. He feels like Mark assumes he's the only one that knows about it, but he plans to use this information to his advantage. In episode 11, KJ is happy to be on the blood tribe because of her, her relationship with him. KJ asks him who he's working with, and he says everyone except JL. KJ tells him she wants to work with him. But aside from that, no content. In episode 12 is where that storyline with Mark really gets expanded upon. 
He talks about how he spotted Mark finding the idol clue and hopes he'll share the idol if he finds it. And eventually Mark tells him about the idol after he finds it, thinking Jordy won't turn on him. However, Jordy feels like he now has control of Mark's future. After the challenge, he has a confessional about JL winning immunity and how she was a target. He now contemplates between Mel and KJ. He doesn't care which one goes, but leans towards Mel because Michelle is still in the game. He feels like they are a shady pairing, lays out the vote split plan, and obviously at the end, Mel gets the most votes, goes out there, but obviously re-enters the game through the fire-making challenge, so there's that. Overall, this was a fairly consistent week for Jordy. We're seeing him being a power player in the Blood Tribe within that Alpha Male Alliance, We've also been getting new storylines from him, particularly with him finding out about Mark's idol and his relationship with KJ, which has given her an in to the Alpha Male Alliance. And I think those storylines will carry forward into the merge. But the reason I have him here at number six is that I feel like Jordy is being set up for a downfall. I know it's becoming a recurring thing for me to say that, oh, this per person being set up for a downfall, where whether it's like with Josh or with Khan, you know, but obviously we haven't really seen that materialize. I think we'll see that with Jordy. I mean, I feel like there's enough evidence there to make me feel like he's going to try to take a shot at Mark and Sam at some point. But based on what I previously said, he said about those two, I feel like Mark and Sam would win that battle. And even his relationship with KJ, I mean, while I, well, I mean, while we see KJ like talk about that quite a bit, I feel like it's something that benefits KJ more than K than Jordy, and I feel like that there will come a point where KJ will turn on Jordy. I mean, she keeps referring to it as a men's alliance, and she keeps talking about them as something she has to deal with, and, you know, those aren't the best connotations in the world. I feel like she's simply aligning with that group that builds some inroads before turning on them, and I think Jordy could very well be a casualty of that if and when KJ decides to flip, so... I feel like there are definitely some downsides for Jordy. I feel like he is being set up for a downfall relatively soon, but he's still a relatively big character in the season. I feel like he's definitely played a decent game up to this point, and because of that, I'm here at number six. Now we're moving on to number five, and I feel pretty good about this person. I feel I wouldn't be surprised if this person ends up making it pretty deep into the merge, although the promo kind of suggests he could be seen as a threat coming into the merge, and here we have Jesse. And again, this was a pretty good week for Jesse. I mean, in episode 10, he talks about how the dynamics are shifting. He's in the majority with Sam, Croc, and Chrissy. He says KJ, Michelle, and Ben are on the outs. His strategy has been to build bonds on his tribe, but he's ready to make big moves. Particularly, he's been meaning to target Ben to his, due to his physical strength and the fact that his partner, Shayel, is also physically strong. He also notes how the lack of food has caused Ben to get cranky, which he feels like will make it easier to target. He sits down with Sam and pitches the Ben plan. He later talks to Ben and Sam, and they agree to a split vote plan between Michelle and Khan. He then gets a confessional about how it's great Ben has no idea that, that his blindside is coming. He expresses the need to flush Khan's idol, but his main focus is blindsiding Ben. He's later shown hanging out with Ben to make him feel comfortable. Sam assures him they got the numbers. The last number he needs is KJ. He sits down with her and she agrees to it. Even so, he starts to notice things are shifting as Croc is or orchestrating a calm blind side. He talks to Croc, who appears to be on board, and then obviously he gets his way with the Ben blind side, but Ben comes back to the game. In episode 11, he tries acting happy and apologizing to Ben after blindsiding him. He tells Chrissy Ben would target her and Croc if he got to the merge. He then says in confessional that he wants to throw the immunity challenge to finish the blend blind side. He feels like Ben still being in the game complicates things, but Ben is blaming Chrissy more than for the move than him. After the challenge, he affirms the Ben blindside. However, Croc starts pulling together a Jesse blindside. But then after Croc tells Ben about the plan, Ben decides to tell Jesse about it. He's shocked about this feeling like he was close to Croc. And obviously, he pulls out the Croc blindside. And in episode 12, Sam talks to him about the vote. And obviously, they're sort of side by side. Doesn't get too much content there. Blindside spend again, end of story. So overall, I feel like this was a decent week for Jesse. I mean, I feel like there are definitely people that suspect that he'll be a big threat at the merge. However, I'm still pretty impressed by the bonds that he had, particularly with Ben and Chrissy, to where obviously Ben doesn't suspect that Jesse was the main person behind his blindside, to the point where he even tells Jesse about Croc's plan to blindside Jesse as a way of saving Ben. I mean sort of crazy how 
their relationship is at a point where Ben is comfortable telling this information to Jesse along with Sam. And then obviously Jesse's able to flip it back around onto Ben. Mind you, I think part of that was so that there was no chance of Ben ever finding out the truth behind Jesse, but still that's something at least. Then of course there's Chrissy who is so loyal to Jesse that she's not willing to turn on him even after Croc proposes this blindside. I mean, her own loved one. So that's sort of crazy on its own. I think there's definitely merit to Jesse's game that was on display this week. It's just a question of whether he's going to be the next boot or not. I don't think he will. I mean, I think he'll try to work with Mark and Sam moving forward. Although I feel like Jordy being there kind of complicates things. But well, we'll see how that really shakes out. But if I feel like he's more likely to survive than Jordy. I can say that much. So I think there's definitely merit to Jesse's game moving forward. I think he recognizes that there's value in keeping around Mark as a big physical threat. But you know, at the end of the day, I don't think he's winning the game. I mean, I feel like while he has a decent case based on his edit, I feel like there are other people that have bigger cases to make. And plus, there's the potential downside of him potentially being the merge boot. But again, there's stuff going in his favor. So because of that, he's here at number five. Now we're moving on to number four. And it's sort of crazy that this person is this high. I mean, obviously, I've been kind of down on this person, not because of them as a player but more so because of my belief that they were due for a downfall and i still think that's true to an extent but i feel like now the possibility is a bit lower and here we have khan and again i feel like this was a kind of good week for khan i mean in episode 10 chrissy talks about how his cooking is deteriorated but it's more of a silly character moment than anything he sits down with chrissy sam and michelle and asks what the plan is while Croc is loyal to Ben, he's confident that he'll go along with the plan, given the rest of the numbers. He suggests they'll tell Croc the plan is to flush his own idol. He has a confessional about wanting to keep his idol. He asks everyone if they won't actually flush his idol, and they agree, and obviously they do. However, we know Sam and Chrissy do want to flush the idol. Ultimately, he does get to hold on to it, and with Jesse's plan going to effect, he is safe. In episode 11, Croc pitches the Jesse plan blindside to him, but obviously... That's not the actual plan that goes through. It's the croc blind side instead. So, but aside from that, no content from him. And in episode 12, he wins individual immunity. However, he promises Sam to hand over the necklace. And at tribal, he does that. And again, there's no serious talk of blindsiding him. So there's that. Overall, this wasn't the biggest week for Khan. And obviously, we're still hearing about people wanting to flush his idol. However, I think he's managed to hold on to it for the entire pre-merge is kind of an impressive feat. And with other threats emerging like Jordy that seem more immediate, I'm starting to feel all right about Khan. Again, I feel like he'll probably be, still be a big threat. I mean, I don't think it's completely impossible for him to be blindsided in the next couple of votes. However, again, I feel like this episode wasn't as negative um, for him. I feel like, like Sam and Mark working with him, trying to appease him, that's kind of faded off to an extent. I mean, it could still come back, but I feel like it's definitely less likely now after seeing this batch of episodes here. But yeah, I'm feeling good about Khan. However, I feel like the next people we'll be talking about are all people I think are pretty likely or more likely to win than him. So because of that, he's here at number four. Now we're moving on to number three, and we have a pretty big character to talk about here, and obviously it is Chrissy. And this was a good, pretty big week for Chrissy. I wouldn't say if it was necessarily good for her gameplay-wise, but edit-wise, she is a consistent presence on the show. In episode 10, she talks about how long she's been out there. She's been commenting on how bad Khan's cooking has been lately. Jesse says she's in his alliance. Later on, she's part of the talk to blindside Ben, but she also wants to flush Khan's idol, sort of following up with that storyline. Later on, she accidentally tells Ben that his name has been discussed. When she, while she tries backtracking, it's apparent that the cat is out of the bag. Even so, Jesse appears to reassure him. Obviously, the Ben blind side goes through, but non elimination leg. Um, in episode 11, has a confessional recap in the previous tribal, asks Jesse how he feels, to which he feels nervous. She says that Crocky's happy, Ben didn't go, and now it's up to them to not get too upset. Notes how awkward it is, considering Ben is actually upset, very upset, and wants to play harder. Jesse tells her that her and Croc would be Ben's top target that they made the merge. She then notes how the men have the majority and how if she made the merge, merge, then she'll be all set. She tells him 
Uh, she wants to get Jesse reunited with Jordy. Jesse says Ben blames Chrissy for the blind side, even though Jesse orchestrated it, which isn't great. Later on, Croc proposes a Jesse blindside, but she's not too comfortable with it. She has a confessional talking about how Jesse is someone she's close with, yet Croc is now throwing him under the bus. Michelle sits down with her and asserts the plan is still Jesse, but Chrissy is upset about the situation. She likes Jesse and has conflicting loyalties. She ultimately tells Jesse she won't change her vote, saying she'll vote for Ben. Croc notices she's upset. She says in confessional that she wants to play a social game but Croc is the one that wants to stick to a strategy. And obviously we get the tribal is completely blindsided when Croc goes home. She literally gets the worst case scenario for her. And obviously that's not great. Episode 12 has a confessional about being blindsided and losing Croc. She misses her family and feels vulnerable without the idol. Is determined to find out who orchestrated it. Talks to Sam who tells her that Ben was responsible. She now blames Ben for being disloyal. After the challenge, she wants to target Ben, talks to Sam and Kong and about the Ben plan. She lays out the plan in the confessional. She knows Sam and Jesse voted out Croc as well, but feels like she has to work with them to get revenge on Ben. And obviously she gets her way by Ben going home. Overall, this was a pretty big week for Chrissy in their edit. She gets a consistent presence, and I'm left with the feeling that she'll remain a major character moving forward. Gameplay-wise, it's not great. First up, she gets some negativity for telling Ben he's a potential target, which ends up being quite significant moving forward, as Ben ends up blaming her for his first blindside. While Ben isn't willing to target her directly, this chip in the relationship explains why Ben doesn't go along with Croc's plan to blindside Jesse, which in turn contributes to Croc's blindside. Obviously losing Croc isn't great, and he seems to be the only one helping her navigate the strategic components of the game. We also learn she's deeply loyal to Jesse to the point where she isn't willing to turn on him even after Croc does. So again, it's not ideal to you know, like lose Croc there. And realistically, I think she has a tough road getting to the very end of the game. I feel like again, like while she has a big edit, like I feel like it's a journey edit more in line with what we saw from like Way in Brains vs. Brawn, where yeah, she'll probably make a deep run, but Again, a lot of it will be about her growing as a person, and obviously those people don't typically win the game, even if they make a very deep run. I feel like Chrissy will have the same fate, where obviously she's now separated from Croc, and obviously you'll have that storyline of her having to play her own game, and we'll see how that shakes out. But again, she could be a major force in the post-merge, I'm not denying that. But again, uh, when it gets down to like the final seven, final six... Like, will she, will anyone be willing to take her that much farther in the game? I mean, I mean, she could very easily fall into this trap of being seen as a jury threat, even if she doesn't play too, too well. So th that's definitely not an ideal situation for her to be in. But again, based on her edit, she's a big enough player to where I have the confidence in her to at least get to that point in the game, even if I feel like she isn't going to make it too, too far beyond that. So because of that, I have her here at number three. Now we're moving on to number two, and like I said, there's a massive gap between the top two and the rest of the list. It's no secret that at this point that I feel like either Mark or Sam is winning this. However, I had a debate on the order for this week, and after thinking about it, I decided to have Mark here at number two. Now, again, he didn't fall too, too much, but I feel like there was just enough negativity in his edit from this past week to have him below the number one person. But in episode 10, Shael says that Mark would be seen as the biggest physical threat to merge, which isn't great. After winning the reward, he gets a confessional talking about how they're valuable, eating food allows him to clear his mind and make better decisions, he bonds with the tribe, and he can potentially find an advantage. He talks to Jordan and Jordy about there being an advantage, says he would like one of them to find it. He then says a confessional that if he found it, he wouldn't tell anyone. Sure enough, he stealthily retrieves an idol clue without anyone noticing. He feels like this is crucial for his game. And when Jordy asks if he found anything, he lies, saying he didn't. However, it turns out he was wrong. It turns out someone did notice that being Jordy. And obviously, Jordy talks about how he would use this information to his advantage. Isn't great for me. I mean... We then move forward to episode 11, where Cage is happy beyond the blood tribe because of her relationship with him. He comments to KJ and Mel that JL assumes that the tribe is a men's club, which is kind of true. 
reinforcing Cage's observation from earlier. But aside from that, no content. He's not really involved too much. Episode 12, that's where this Jordy thing kind of resurrects. He talks about feeling good about his position, given that the men are running the tribe. With the merge coming, he feels like the men are getting ready, and he feels like Shale's a big threat for her physical ability and ability to find idols. He gets out the look for the idol. He talks about his military training and how he needs to keep things covert. He also wants to keep the whole thing a secret, but what he doesn't know is that Jordy knows about the clue as well. Sure enough, he finds the idol. Even, even so, he does bump the Jordy afterwards, who initially doesn't catch him, like, doesn't know about it. I mean, obviously, he pretends to keep searching for the clue, where he contemplates revealing the idol to Jordy, and sure enough, that's what he does. He does reveal the idol to Jordy. While he knows he can't trust anyone, he feels uh, like Jordy isn't malicious enough to turn on him. Yeah, but we then see Jordy say that he would uh, use his information against Mark, and that he would. He feels like now with this information, he controls Mark's fate. But then later on, he proposes a vote split between Mel and KJ. JL tells him that KJ is her biggest threat. He's supposed to vote for Mel, but knows he can flip his vote. He contemplates who's better for his game at the merge. And obviously, you know, Mel gets voted out, but saves herself due to the fire making challenge. So there's that. Overall, this was a fine week for Mark. I mean, again, I still see him as a top contender. Obviously, there's a lot of good stuff to unpack here. He's continuing to get solid confessionals about the game and his background. But obviously, the big knock here is Jordy. You know, again, him thinking that he kept the clue a secret, even though Jordy immediately contradicts him. And then obviously, after finding the idol, he assumes that Jordy is on his side and that this will be the little secret, which is then immediately contradicted by Jordy saying that he would use his information to harm Mark's game. So again, that's not particularly great. Mind you, it's not enough to knock him out of winner contention. I still feel like Mark is going to be a top contender moving forward. And I mentioned earlier that if and when Jordy takes the shot at Mark, I feel like Mark would be able to win the battle based on the way the edit is being set up. However, it is just enough to where I can't really put him at number one for this week. However, if he does rebound, or if the person number one kind of takes a back seat, then I feel like he probably will jump back up to number one. But for this week, at least, I have him here at number two. And now on number one, the person I think is the most likely to win Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water for me is Sam. Now, admittedly, I feel like her edit didn't jump as much off the page this week to make her number one. I feel like it's more so Mark moving down due to the Geordie stuff. But still, I mean, there's still a lot of good stuff in Sam's edit. I mean, in episode 10, Jesse says she's in his alliance. She sits down with Jesse and they agree to target Ben. Later on, she has a confessional about agreeing to the Ben blind side. She talks to Chrissy about flushing Khan's idol. Chrissy wants to flush it. And of course, she goes along with the plan to blindside Ben, but obviously comes back into the game. In episode 11, has a confessional after the challenge about finishing the job and blindsiding Ben. She talks to Jesse, Croc, and Chrissy to reaffirm this. She tells them that everyone knows Ben is dangerous, but Croc talks about how difficult the vote was last time. Through this, Sam is confident they have the numbers. Later on, Ben tells her and Jesse about the Jesse blindside. She asserts that her, Jesse, and Ben are a new alliance. And of course, I mean, she goes along with the Croc blindside, so there's that. In episode 12, 12 uh, tells Chrissy that Ben was responsible for the Croc blindside, causing her to target Ben. Passes out during the challenge. Obviously, that's a big emotional moment there, but obviously, like, she ends up being fine. Later on, she's a swing vote with Jesse. She has a confessional laying out all her options. And of course, in the end, her and Jesse uh, agree to blindside Ben. Ben finished the job as she said. And now she's going to the merge, getting there with Mark. And again, there's a lot of great stuff in Sans edit as well as Mark. Again, I feel like these. Two are far and away the front runners to win, in my personal opinion, and really in a lot of people's opinion. I think people are really catching on to this. You know, like, and again, I I feel like again, if Mark has a downfall, if who knows, maybe Jordy could somehow win the battle, or maybe something happens to where Mark has to win out, or if 
you know, someone else decides to take the shot at Mark, like KJ, I feel like there are potentials for Mark to go home and that, that, that as a case. And Sam is clearly the number one person there. I also feel like, and I'll probably be making a separate video about this. I feel like Sam is playing the better overall game than Mark. I mean, I feel like they're both playing very strong games, but I feel like Sam is less likely to be targeted going into the merge than Mark. And I feel like that's another thing in her favor. I mean, she has Jesse as a very close ally. Like, she's going in there with Mark. They're going to combine their alliances, I feel like. You know, they'll probably bring Seth, I mean. But again, she's in a position to dominate the game. And she's already been doing that to a large extent. But I feel like, again, she's about to inherit a very favorable position. So I feel like there's definitely plenty of pros to go with Sam. And again, with Mark's edit kind of going down a bit this week, I feel like Sam really jumps up to number one at this point. So because of that, I feel like Sam is the most likely person to win Australian Survivor Blood versus Water. And there we go. That will do it for this week's Power Rankings. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I kind of alluded to this a second ago, but something I thought about doing is making a player ranking for this season so far. I mean, I know I make player rankings at the end of the season. And that was my plan for the start, but I thought it might be fun now that we're around the midpoint of the season to sort of do a player ranking at that. So sort of taking the edit out of things and just talking about the games being played. I thought that might be a fun video to do. And of course, there's other stuff I'm covering. I mean, Amazing Race is still happening. Celebrity Big Brother is about to wrap up. So I have some videos planned for that. I also have Big Brother Canada. That's starting up soon. We're actually going to be getting a cast reveal soon. That'll be fun. And of course, Survivor 42 is starting soon. I'm very excited for that. I'm sure a lot of you are. So stay tuned for that. And of course, more Australian Survivor as we get along. There's a lot going on, and I'm very excited to cover it all. But for now, that is the video. See ya.